Hey, Steve here, and in this video, I'm providing the answer to the most commonly asked question that I receive in my YouTube comments, which is, how do I save my finished images in Photoshop? What happens to all the layers and adjustments I created? Should I flatten my image before saving? And what's next when I finish editing my photo? Well, the good news is that the answer is coming right up. Plus, I'll be showing my actual process for sharpening, resizing, and exporting my own photos. So if you're familiar with my six-stage editing workflow, then you know that stage six is resize, sharpen, and export. Uh, and a side note, if you want to download the free PDF that maps out that entire six stage editing workflow from start to finish, then just click the link in the description below this video. Now, the very first thing that I personally do and what I recommend that you do once you've finished making all your edits to an image in Photoshop is quite simply just hit save. And this will save your image depending on how you've got Photoshop configured, either in a PSD or a TIFF format. So that next time you open it in Photoshop, you'll be, able to, you'll be able to pick up exactly where you left off with all your layers and adjustments intact, just in case you ever want to make any tweaks to your image later on. So if you opened your image into Photoshop from Lightroom, then this PSD or TIFF file will appear back in Lightroom the next time you, uh, you open Lightroom and it'll be right next to the original RAW file. Now, what I want you to do is think of this PSD or TIFF file as your master image. So you're not going to be uploading this file, this actual file, anywhere, sharing it, printing it or anything. So what you'll do is uh, treat this as your master image and then create copies from it that you're then going to resize and sharpen for each specific purpose. So here's what this process looks like. If it sounds complicated, don't worry. Once you get your head around the idea of having a master image and then creating disposable copies of it, your mind and your image catalogue will become far less cluttered. So let's say that we've just finished working on this image that you've been looking at this whole time. And we've got all these layers and edits and adjustments and whatnot down here in the layers panel. Now I've already done this for this image because I basically just opened up an old image of my own. Um, but if this is the first time that I'm opening it and working on it, when I finished, I'll just hit the save button. So command or control and S on the keyboard. And you'll see here that's given the image a .tiff file um, extension. So I know that next time I open this .tiff file, I'm going to basically open it in Photoshop and everything's going to look exactly as it does right now. So the question becomes, what do you do when you want to upload this to Facebook? Because you can't upload a PSD or a .tiff file to Facebook, or if you want to send it to get printed or any, you know, upload to your website, anything like that. So here's my process. The very first thing you want to do, assuming that you've just opened your finished image, maybe you worked on it yesterday, saved it, you come back today, open it. Here we are in Photoshop. I want you to go to image, duplicate, and give it a name. Uh, so uh, let's say Facebook, click OK. And that's going to duplicate everything we can see here. And that then frees you up to close the main master image. And the reason we want to do that as quickly as possible is because we don't want to accidentally save any changes and mess something up. So the reason we're working on a duplicate here is because if you were to resize your image and make it a lot smaller to go online, um, and then later you realize you actually did that on your master image, and then you accidentally hit save, you'll probably never get that full original size back again unless you just reprocess the whole image from start to finish again in exactly the same way. So once you've um, duplicated your image, you then right click anywhere down here in the layers panel and then we can flatten the image. That gets rid of all the layers and that frees us up to be able to change the um, the color profile. So under edit, when you to click either convert or, a, well, not assign, definitely not assign, um, click convert to profile. And then in this convert to profile box, your profile, your source space should be pro photo RGB. If, if that's how you've got it set up in Photoshop, then I want you to pick sRGB for um, if you're sharing this anywhere online, choose sRGB here as the destination. 
if you're sending it to a printers to be printed on, you know, some, well, <laughs> you know what people print things on, um, then check with that particular printer which color profile they prefer. The chances are it's going to be Adobe RGB or they may have their own that they'll ask you to install. That's a topic for another day. For now, we're going to use sRGB and we'll click OK. Now, we really shouldn't notice any difference in changing the color space there once we've got to that point where we've completed our image and done all the edits. So don't worry about that for now. It probably is a deeper topic to go into, but that's now is not the time for that. Uh, once we've done this, we can then uh, resize the image. So let's go to image and then image size. And if we're uploading the image to Facebook, the ideal size is 2048 pixels on the long edge. So we'll go 2048 there. Um, just choose the you know, preferred re uh, resize settings here. I've got preserved details here. Um, then we'll click OK. And that resizes the image. And now that the image has been resized, we can now sharpen it for the appropriate use. So um, one way of doing that might be to duplicate the background, choose filter and then sharpen and smart sharpen is a good one. And then just pick, pick whichever settings you want to use here. Um, the larger the image is being used, the more sharpening you can apply. Uh, let's just go with this for now, just a random amount. Um, but yeah, just that's going to come down to trial and error and the particular image and how much it needs sharpening. So just test your own sharpening methods here. Um, so now we've sharpened it and we've resized it. We can then export. And the way that we'll do that is go File, Export, and then Export As. And then in here, we can choose the various formats. So JPEG if you're sharing online. 2048, we're not going to change the size or anything. Quality, you can probably get away file size. If, if two and a half meg is a bit big, um, just over here, it's got a preview of how large the file is actually going to be. If that's too large, like you probably don't want an image this big in a blog post, for example, then you can reduce the size or the quality down to about 70%. And that reduces the file size quite significantly, but not noticeably the quality of the actual image. Um, and then finally, we'll click this embed color profile so that that um, any anything reading any applications that read this image later, if the color profile is embedded, there's a better chance that it's going to display it correctly. Uh, and then we'll click export. And then it will prompt you to choose a location to save this file. And that's it. So what you're going to do once you've got your saved JPEG and you've uploaded it to Facebook, I want you to delete it. And then you don't have to worry about that small version turning back up in your Lightroom catalog. Um, you don't have to worry about having all these various different versions of the same image. Um, you know, I recommend exporting all of your images to a temporary folder that you basically just delete every once in a while so that you can, you know, if you ever need to recreate that size, that 2048 pixel version, then you can just come back and repeat this process in um, you know, using the master as the main source. And really, that's my favorite way of uh, thinking about this and managing all my files. I don't have heaps of copies of the same image all over the computer. I literally just have that one source, that master file. And anytime I need to sharpen and resize and export a newly sized version or any version at all, I'll just come back into Photoshop and repeat this process. So just a quick reminder, like I said at the start of this video, this is basically what I've shown you here is one version of stage six of my six stage Photoshop editing workflow. If you want to see stages one to five, then you can just download the free PDF from the link in the description. But for now, thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.